<laughs> Here we go. John Bird's big surprise. I'm going to let everybody else see it. No, 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 no. Me. You got to look at it first. Oh, I have to look at it first. Yeah. Ready? Is this the way to look at it? Other way. This way? Yep. Next way. No, this way? Yes. That's it. Oh, my gosh. Ready? Can I feel it run for it? Okay, it's in a box. Okay. Yes, I'm ready. Go. <laughs> He's going to cry. Don't cry, John Bird. John Bird's big surprise. I cannot wait. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Uh, are you so excited? Yes. Are you excited, Tony Gump? I'm actually excited. Tony was yeah. so excited that when we were uh, we were recording stuff, we were videoing stuff Saturday, he came this close to me. He said, I got to tell you something. So he didn't tell me, but he told me that you guys had something for me. So I had all weekend to think well, about Well, and I, I told Tony, too, I said, we've got to – unveil the surprise on the show by the way the i've got a pretty good idea what it is the, i don't one that, of two things yeah i do okay so you you've got two things in your head that i think yeah it's okay. either going to be an iphone 15 <laughs> or it's going to be um a car like yours okay well how do you know it's a thing how do, how do you know it's not some big event oh, it's we're not about go, to put oh, on no it's not gonna be one of those things where you have our dying love and devotion and hug me and crap like that <laughs> that's I what want, you I do want something. i know but uh, that's me i'm weird you guys are normal no what i'm if, joking anything you anything what if we brought that's in nice. a bunch of people from your past like this is your life like your old third grade teacher <laughs> The, oh my God! The Ms. one Smith. that got no, you put on Ritalin, you know, yeah. things like no, that. Miss Smith, she was like seventy-five years old when I was in the third grade, so I doubt she's around. <laughs> We're like bringing in a casket on uh, hand trucks <laughs> yeah. in here. <laughs> yeah, bringing Kurt teacher. Russell have a look alike contest. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh man, that would be awesome. Oh man, good stuff. So, uh, do do we want to go Is ahead and do Russell? it now? Is it Kurt? Yeah, go ahead. That's no, uh, not Kurt Russell. Okay, all right, it's not Kurt Russell. Okay, okay. Should I but close it, my it, eyes? it it is a thing. You don't have to close your eyes because we've got it boxed up. Okay, where what are you looking for? I'm looking for it. Where is it? <laughs> Is it hidden? Is it under the, it's under the table, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. You did it before I got here, so I didn't know. So you need, you need these because it's, it's taped. It's just oh, okay. a tape package. Right. So, so, so. <laughs> what, what do you think? I'm giving you a baby to cut the umbilical cord? <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Oh, my gosh. And here it is. This <gasps> is John Bird's big surprise. Okay? It's not right, but that's okay. <laughs> need What's he expecting it's right not here, Christmas. Yeah. It's a, it's not even your birthday. It's a random surprise. Okay. All right. All right so go ahead and uh Okay, it's not clothes. I it's, not, no, no. it's not not T Moo underwear. No. Could be a book, but I'm not thinking that. But I could be wrong. Let's see. All right, here he goes. Cut each side and then slowly down the middle and open it up. <laughs> Here we go, John Bird's big surprise. I'm gonna let everybody else see it. No, 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 no. Me. You got to look at it first. Oh, I have to look at it first. Yeah. Ready? Is this the way to look at it? Other way. This way? Yep. Next way. No, this way. Yes. That's it. Oh my gosh! Ready? Can I feel it run for? Okay, it's in a box. Okay. Yes, I'm ready. Go. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna cry. Don't cry, John Bird. It's uh, it's show the people what it is. It's what he's wanted since he was a little kid. Evil Knievel stunt <laughs> cycle. You've waited fifty five years, John Bird. You've waited fifty five years for that I'm, exact. Can one. y'all finish the podcast? Because I'm going out in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is the best oh, here comes a hug. Here comes a hug for Tony Gump. Oh, how sweet! Oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> All right, here it is. The big surprise. <laughs> I'm going to do videos, and I'll have them, and I'll post them, and we'll do them. Oh, this is great. Well, and here's what happened is it had been talked about multiple times on the show, and, and Tony Gump was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and get it. I, I said, if you do, I said, we've got to give it to him on the show because I need his genuine reaction. 
He's talked about it so many times. Anytime we're like, what's the best gift you ever got and things like that. So we just had to do something, you know? Man. And, you know, and see, I still have part of the chassis at my dad's house. Mm -hmm. The original. And every once in a while when I go visit, I'll get it and look at it, you know. Pretend you've got one of those. Yeah. But you know what is extra special about this, besides the fact that you guys bought it for me, is that if I would have bought it, yeah, it would have been okay. But... It's a gift the way these should be. That's right. You know, they should be given out to the world. And now I'm going to buy something for, I'm going to buy one of these for somebody. <laughs> you have to so, pass it along. Listen, this is, uh, this, this is right up John Bird's alley too. And Tony knows this. Uh, John Bird is a very thoughtful gift giver. Yep. And so uh, this was about as thoughtful as you could get for <laughs> John Bird. So I know I can't. Okay. Now, and I know I always think about content, but I do want you like when you get home and you're messing around with it, you do okay, need to put need together a couple here. videos. Okay, I don't. I, I want. I want to open it. Are you gonna open it? That's. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. Oh man! Just I'm be careful. I've got to. wood at home. I'm gonna build a ramp. Man, are you? T- oh my god! I think it comes with the ramp. What? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Are you kidding me? It said it, it on the ramp. back. It had a ramp on it. I oh think my god! It's gosh. got the ramp with it. Uh oh, there it is. There's. Oh the yeah, ramp. yeah. That's the. Cr- oh, that's the crank. Oh, nice. Okay. And that's it. Okay, all right, here it is. This is it. Oh, the crank is the ramp. That's what it yes. is. And it, yeah, because it's like that when it goes down. He knows this so well. All right, and the unboxing. You know, people on YouTube get big hits for unboxing stuff. Maybe we should go that route. There's evil. Oh, my God. There he is. Oh, my gosh. Oh my God. Just don't it. hurt him. No, I won't. Oh, he's tough. He's been through so much. We went through so much. <laughs> now, when, we when uh, so much. Evil Knievel came through a car wash I ran in Clearwater, Florida, and <laughs> seriously, yeah, uh, and he was in a white uh, Rolls Royce, and he died, like, soon after that. Oh, man. Yeah. He didn't die from a clean car, though, did he? No, I think it was just natural causes. I don't think it had to do with the cleanliness. <laughs> just, it's so funny Two because... Two great American heroes meeting. <laughs> he has to say Donald... <laughs> it's just oh so funny because no matter who we bring up, there is a ninety-five percent chance that they that person's been through Tony's car wash. Yeah, like, well, legitimately no, everybody has been through. Your no, car when wash. you're in a hot spot like Clearwater, Florida, at like the beach and stuff like that, and you have a busy car wash, there's a lot of famous people that come through those places. Yeah, no doubt. Look at that. Look at that. And he's still made out of wire. You know, they didn't try and make him all 3D mold. He's still let's, rubber and let's wire. Let's give him his, uh, his, his uh, afford that. him his. Look at that. That's awesome. Look at that guy. <laughs> wow. And then there's his bike. <gasps> oh, yeah. He is made out of wire, isn't he? Yeah. Just like the old days, man. Look at that sexy bike, man. That man. He's, uh, are you kidding me? Look at that. And then you put his, what, you, you put his feet down in here this mm-hmm. he'll do this and then he'll, he'll bend he can stand up on his bike but yeah he'll sit down and i'll grab him grab him like that yeah. well he doesn't feel like it right now <laughs> he's, gonna go in his, he's going in his trailer i was gonna i was gonna suggest him just do one takeoff but we've got so much nice equipment yeah. in here we're gonna wait uh, yeah this would be this would be very dangerous you know he's got a uh he's got his own uh trailer i think they have just come out with it you know back in the day he had like his own you know big trailer yeah, and yeah. stuff fascinating this is great guys i'm so excited for you oh my gosh now was this out of of mind because i won't be able to do anything here to podcast now outside of the iphones and all that you did you have legitimate guesses as to what it was and i didn't even i didn't even try i had this is as far away from you know you didn't expect it no that's awesome you kidding me this is just it's like christmas do you ever do you ever think, Tony Gubb, you'd get to a point in your life where you're giving uh, toys to a 61 year old man who's elated, uh, is more excited than he's ever been in his entire life? I honestly, it feels like I'm giving a present to a kid at Christmas <laughs> time right now. You know? I mean, look at him. Just <laughs> <laughs> he's so over the moon right now. I just can't get. He was like evil Knievel stunt cycle. You know? <laughs> oh man, that's good stuff. Well, listen, this is the point of the show where you give back to us and you give back to the audience. 
you guys have put together some angry Shakespeare, and we want to uh, we want to yes. debut those. Yeah. We Tony s- put me through my paces because I was only going to do like a couple, and he just had ideas flying. He was getting on the internet and grabbing the lyrics and saying, hey, yeah. try this one, try this one. So we got we got a bunch in there. Well, and the way we do it works out great because I don't see them – in advance i see them when the audience sees them and even if i'd seen it in advance it's always so hilarious i end up cracking up anyway Mm -hmm. uh but so this is a new one this is by who Mm -hmm. Uh, tony that's what that's a mystical uh shake your ass (laughs) it's funny to hear tony say that yes ass ass with two z's watch yourself shake your ass and we got man we got snoop we got dre we got tons of great ones coming up in in uh, coming weeks okay so this one is mystical shake your ass Mm -hmm. shake your ass as as it is spelled and whenever you're ready tony gump you can take it away good evening (laughs) and welcome to this evening's Angry Shakespeare Raps. <laughs> Putting the bifocals Today's on. Today's selection from the Great Book of Rap. <laughs> it's almost like he forgot he had the Great Book of Rap. Is mystical with shake your ass. <laughs> shake your ass, but watch yourself. Shake your ass, show me what you're working with. Shake your ass, but watch yourself. Shake your ass. I came here with my d*** in my hand. (laughs) Don't make me leave here with my foot in your ass. Be cool. And don't worry about how I'm ripping this shit. When I'm flipping, when kicking, n***. This is just what I do. I'm effervescent, and I'm off that crescent. Yeah, since a full-grown German shepherd motherfucker keeps stepping. They don't f*** with me. They won't. Your b*** can't catch me, and you won't. (laughs) <laughs> Tell yourself, fix your hair, throw that <laughs> I'm proud of my poo nanny and a dollar for my booty. You think I'm tricking? <clears throat> I ain't tripping. I'm buying if you got nice curves for your iceberg. Drinking here acting like it's gonna do something to me. Hope this indecent proposal make you do something with me. <laughs> Fuck a dollar, girl. Pick up 50. And fuck a coward. You need a real n***a. <laughs> Off top n***a about to turn shit. Bend over h***a. Show me what you working with. Shake your ass. But watch yourself. Shake your ass. Show me what you're working with. Attention all your players and pimps. Right now in the place to be. I thought I told you n- before. Your n- can't f- with me. Now, this ain't for no small booties. No circus, that won't pass. But if you feel you got the biggest one, then mama, come shake your ass. Shake your ass. But watch yourself. Shake your ass. Show me what you're working with. I come from a fire like higher. Chocolate and bow-legged running up behind. Go ahead, get down, pop lock at the cock house. For real though, girl, don't lie. You know that you want to go back to my house? Man, right here looking under that dress right there? Spicy Cajun, we gonna pass a good time right there. You better s*** the head of them crawfish. You handle your business, but I know you do it way better. Did you edit it out, son? <laughs> so if you toting by and those n- make noise, when you pass by your fine ass on the floor, girl, this is your f- song <laughs> do your thing don't be scared because you gonna get served get mine because you gonna get yours <laughs> about to make your ass love it, <laughs> it up. show your g-string hustling hustling attention all your players and pimps right now in the place to be i thought i told you n- before <laughs> y'all n- can't f- with me now this ain't for no small booties no circus that won't pass but if you feel like you got the biggest one then mama shake your ass shake your ass but watch yourself shake your ass show me what you're working with wow <laughs> that was so good that was so good uh, 
Good job, guys. Yeah, yeah. I, th- oh, I thought man. we knocked it out of the park. You know what? The funniest part, well, not probably not the funniest part, but uh, an amusing part of that was as John Bird sat there and watched it just now, he would do his head like this as if he were doing <laughs> Age of Shakespeare again. <laughs> yeah. It was like, man, he's really into this. That was pretty wild. That was a good session this past few days. Yeah, man. it really was. Yeah, and we uh, added an accessory. So the next one will have an extra accessory. What what was the accessory on this one? Oh, that was, that was not. Oh, okay. I, I, I did the I used the accessory on several, and I'll give you a hint. And then my head got really hot and sweaty, so then I went back to this. Is he wearing dreads? Damn it! Did you tell him? <laughs> did you tell him? I didn't, I didn't know. I just it's, guessed. I didn't tell him. I'm erasing all the angry Shakespeare's. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Man. But but um, yeah, there are also some other uh, adornments that are coming. Right. Out. I would, uh, you you maybe thought about an afro? Yeah, that might be a little too racist. Do you racist? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's just an idea. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I better check myself. You better check yourself. Uh, so I, I mentioned this on the show today mm-hmm. that oh, yeah. uh, on, on the wheel, I said, we'll probably revisit this. We did a story about a guy who uh, had uh, blew his nose out in the shower. He's got breathing issues and everything else. He's 30, what I say he was, like 38 years old or something. Yeah. And his doctor says, well, with your breathing issues, when you're in the shower, I guess the steam and everything else, he said, blow your nose then, and that will help you out and help you get uncongested or whatever. Mm -hmm. He did that, and he blew out of his nose a Lego piece (laughs) that he had put up there when he was a kid that had been there for, you know, 25 years or whatever. And I'm just like, how do you go through... Here's the guy right here. How do you go through a life not knowing... And how many doctor's visits have you made where they didn't notice? I mean, you get a... a, You don't have to get a CT, a CAT scan, like... Just an X-ray? Wouldn't that show you a well, little yeah, I mean, piece up there? If he's had problems over the years, he probably went to a specialist. You want to get your face X-rayed? You can get uh, your face X-rayed, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. You don't have to wear a thing over your. The, what's the vest for when you do X-ray? So it doesn't cook your insides. Oh well, then how does it? How does it not cook your brain if you get your face X-rayed? It probably just um, does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, pro- it's too it's late. part of the process. <laughs> anyway, uh, here's here's the video. We didn't play this on the show, but this is the video from the news story about this guy with the Lego nose. Let's pause to one second. Where the hell is it? Back there in we go. the 1990s, I was maybe six or so, I think. I'm still checking with my mom. I'm not 100% sure on that. But I was a kid playing with my Legos, as most I mean, you're wearing a Lion King t-shirt. I think you're still a kid. And I had the greatest idea to take one of those little dot Legos, and I don't know, I just thought maybe I could just stick it in my nose. I don't know why I did that. Kids in the 90s just did I don't know why. Um, I was one of those children. Uh, Well, I panicked, of course, because this Lego piece was too small for me to reach in my nose and grab it. Mm. So I had the brilliant idea of making a little Lego man and I was going to stick the Lego man up my nose <laughs> and try to connect the piece on the top of the head. That's like a bad Sounds idea. good in theory. Because it would fit, you know. So it's like a rescue mission. My little Lego man was going on a <laughs> deep diving rescue mission to Pop that little Lego out. Well, I stuck the Lego man in my nose, and of course, the Lego head popped off Oof. in my nose. So now that was also stuck in my nose. Mm. Man. Uh, at this point, I've panicked loudly, and my mom came in, and in her panic, she's looking at my nose and seeing there's a Lego head stuck in my nostril. So she grabs a pair of tweezers. And she, you know, tilts my head back. She fishes out this Lego head. And she's asking me over and over, like, why did you do that? You know, like, why are you sticking Legos in your nose? You shouldn't be doing that. I'm crying. I don't know what's going on. I'm just telling her, I don't know. Because I'm a kid in the 90s 
and I'm terrified of my parents. Um, <laughs> I just didn't want to get in trouble. I don't know. Um, so now, mind you, I said that was when I was about six years old. Um, I'm 32, and I was in the shower, uh -oh. and my doctor has told me that whoever's in the, the room is laughing at him. Summer months, <laughs> uh, it's it's really helpful to blow your nose while you're in the shower because the humidity of the steam and everything, it like really helps kind of Did clear you know that? Out. Yes. So I've been hmm. regularly That's doing this do for the last like six months or so. So I live in Arizona and it's hot 90% of the time here and dry. It's a dry heat. Um, today I was blowing my nose <laughs> in the shower <laughs> and right. lo and behold, right. I blew out a Lego dot. That has been in my nose for at least 26 years. And mm -hmm. I don't know what to think of this because I have had multiple breathing issues with asthma and it's sleep apnea. I just got something. diagnosed with mm. obstructive sleep apnea. Um, and I feel like this Lego piece <laughs> has been the culprit it has, for the last dude. 26 years of my life and i i'm shooketh um Shook. i put it in a bag yes because i'm going to take it to my doctor and and, and we're gonna we're gonna discuss this mm. um yeah so I, I would think yeah you need to discuss with your doctor why he didn't spot the lego piece although it is cool to randomly find at, at 30 something years old to find one of your old toys from when you're a kid yeah. I mean, it's not necessarily cool for it to come out your nose, but you know when you're digging through the garage and you find your old Ninja Turtle action figures. Oh, yeah, man. That's the best feeling. However, I think maybe what what happened, this is just my hypothesis, is um, mom helped him get the head out, but she didn't know about the little hat. Right. And maybe he didn't even look at, bother looking at it and thought, okay, she got it all out mm -hmm. if he couldn't feel it. Yeah. Now, the same thing happened to me when I was about four. For some reason, I put a dried black eyed pea up my nose. I don't know why. And it started swelling. So I was trying to, you know, get it out. And then I got really upset. And, uh, you know, my mom tried to get it out. And she couldn't. We went to the doctor. And he's like, we're going to have to wait. I don't know why they would have to wait a couple of weeks. I would think it would swell even bigger. But maybe it turned to mush or something. But it was a couple of weeks. And then, then we had to go back for me to get it out. And I don't remember any of this. I was traumatized, wow. obviously. Wow. Yeah. What? You, I can't stand black eyed peas to this day. Do you remember? Were you eating black eyed peas before? You know, I think probably in the kitchen. You know, mom, mom was cooking. Yeah, and I was like, oh, what's this? oh, I think I put it up my nose. What the hell? You don't remember the the logic behind that? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't had much logic in my life. Yeah, you know. So back then at four, I mean, I I don't know, I don't know why, but uh, I don't know why kids do that. There's a fascination with that. What have you put up your nose? I don't know that I've Come done anything now. like that. Tony, I know you put stuff up your nose. Well, my only question with this guy is, is he puts it up his nose. He doesn't want to get in trouble, but did he just like forget about it for a decade? Yeah, did or? mom get the, get the head out and then he's like, okay, she doesn't, maybe he thought it did connect and he thought when that, she pulled the head out, all I'm of thinking. it was gone. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe he just got so used to it. When Once he got to his teenage years, he just kind of forgot about it on yeah. a day-to-day -day basis. Well, I mean, and your nose grows. Your head grows. So maybe it just created more room so that there was less to irritate him, you know, as far as him saying, oh, man, there's something in there. He probably forgot about it by the end of the day at that age. You know, he's got Dang. off something else. Whatever. Can we Google something real quick? Can we, can we Google uh, objects... Um, duck in people's bodies. No, oh, no. No, no, no. Okay, maybe that's not the right terminology. Um. Oh yeah, there you go. That top one. The the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's perfect. Okay. University of Nebraska Medical Center. I'm looking first before we put it up. Yeah. Okay. Um, this well, looks like a global for global center for health security. Does it have a list? Um. It's give. It's just CDC data on what people have gotten stuck in there. Why don't I just do images? Uh, Maybe. Oh, yeah, look at... Yeah, just click through some of those. Okay. 
Look at that. <laughs> Look at the a knife. gun. Just, My God, there's a gun. <laughs> Look at the switchblade in this dude's pelvis. Dude, that guy's got a cassette tape up his... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what? Is that Michelle? Oh, yeah. That's that? Michelle Obama. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, a pair of pliers. Pair of okay. pliers. What is it? like a mason jar. Almost. <laughs> yeah, a medicine so. bottle or something. <laughs> What is this? <laughs> a, a, a Bud Light. <laughs> okay, so they didn't. Obviously, they didn't swallow that. Uh, <laughs> that uh, is, is that for real? I mean, come on. That's somebody going to prison uh, and trying to sneak in contraband. <laughs> what is this? Is that somebody's head? <laughs> and it looks like somebody's head. Mm. Uh, this has got me spooked. It's a. Jellyfish, intestinal and, jellyfish. Yeah, I don't maybe know. something to do. Uh, I don't know. What, don't what know. could that be, John Bird? Uh, um, uh, maybe a uh, uh, shuttlecock from uh, playing. Well, no, that's that's what you call what? playing badminton. Oh, that's called a birdie. shuttlecock. Yes, Holy yes, that's moly. the professional okay. name for it. That's what uh, uh, P Diddy was doing, and he got arrested for it. He was shuttling cock. <laughs> that's right. Uh, what is this? A WMD? Gosh. It looks that like is. It. Yeah, it's a the literal bomb. Look at that picture. That poor guy. <laughs> you know what's this about? I don't know. Uh, okay, car go, keys. go go go. Car keys. Okay, I can see that. Yeah, car keys. Uh, yeah. Easy. Go to the blue one. Up uh, one more. Yeah. Well, the, the yeah that one. See what that. What is that? Is that a tip of a? Looks broom? like zip ties. It does look like zip ties. Mm, huh. Dang. Hmm. All right. Um, Plastic egg? I don't know. We're, we're, we're about to get into images <laughs> yeah. of wieners, so yeah. we better be careful. Uh, uh, and YouTube right. will boot us. Anyway, I was just curious. I, I know CDC because we've talked cane. about it. <laughs> we've talked about it on the show a uh, list of, you know, like we'll have an incident and it'll be like, this is not the first incident, and it'll go through a whole list. New York Post does that a lot. Yeah. And so I figured there'd be a list of uh, inanimate objects that have gotten yeah, stuck in people's bodies. I'm sure bodies. the list is, list is endless. But many of those had to go in the back door. Yeah. And yeah. You, you wonder what the story behind that is. Like, what prompted you? Are Because are you, there's one of two things. One is either you're trying to conceal it, like you're trying to hide it. Right. Or two, you're doing it for pleasure. Which I don't understand what a revolver, how a revolver could give you pleasure. No, that yeah, that's that's got to be. Uh, it's definitely hidden. Yeah, yeah. Hidden. maybe we should have just specified like things you shove up your nose or something. Well, listen, as long as you don't shove one of these Israeli beepers oh, up your ass, man. then you'll be all right. Yeah. Good okay. gosh. Have y'all yeah. seen that? Y'all seen the video? Oh my gosh! This is uh, so. If you don't know, um, Mossad, Israel had found the way to get beepers to Hezbollah terrorists, especially in Lebanon. And today, earlier today, all the beepers simultaneously exploded. Now, I, my first thing was, did they hack the beepers? How did they do that? And how did they make them explode? Is it a battery thing or whatever? And uh, from what I understand is maybe some sort of Israeli operative was went, went over to like you know terroristville and set up a pager store and started selling pagers oh, and his biggest okay. clientele was terrorist blah 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 and so they were using that to communicate with each other well then once they sold enough beepers to enough terrorists they give word back to israel and they say all right whenever you're ready hit the button and these beepers are literally exploding on their sides. It is crazy. Here's one video. This is from like a supermarket or something. Watch the guy in the light colored shirt and the blue hat. Whoa! <laughs> oh! oh. And everybody else is just kind of looking. They're like, I ain't going over there. I don't know. It just blew up. Ahmed, you have a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Come again. Oh, uh, here's another one. This is another supermarket. Check this one out. Again, watch. Just watch the sides, and it just blows up. Oh, just buying my juice. Oh, it's going off. Well, that woman better cover up her face. Or she's going to get it. There we go. Uh-oh. He's checking it. Oh. Careful. Oh, God. Oh, dang. Oh. Dang, bro. Man. 
Savage. That's a PMD. Pagers of mass destruction. <laughs> right. Dang. And look at this one. Oh, this man. this guy got lucky because apparently he had it sitting <laughs> on his nightstand. Good God. But look at the hole that it put in his nightstand. Why <laughs> Dang, bro. I call some havoc. That's crazy. And some, listen, these seem like they might not be that bad, but there's some images out there that we really can't show where, um, I mean, people have got fingers blown off. There's one one picture of one guy, and he's just got a giant hole in his side. I mean, you see his guts and everything. Dang. Like, when I say these beepers blew up, they were like little mini bombs. And I'm like, I thought y'all were into that kind of thing, strapping bombs to yourself and yeah. blowing up. You could definitely tell who put the beeper up to their face to look at the beeper when it happened, too. You yeah, know? you <laughs> won't do that again, yeah. will you, buddy? Here's a picture of the hospital, or this is a video of the hospital in Lebanon. They got overrun, overcrowded with terrorists looking for, uh, looking for help because they had been injured so badly. People everywhere, just laying on the floor. It's easy to spot the terrorists. Come on, these people got jacked up. Tell you what, the refund department at the Walmart is going to be busy tomorrow. Is it wrong to find this funny, or should I? Oh, be like, I think it's hilarious because of who, of who it happened to. I don't have a problem with it. Mohammed, I told you, no use beeper. It's 2024. Oh man, oh, I got jacked up. Yeah, you know the the people that got it the worst are likely people that have bad eyesight, and they had to bring the beeper close to their face to read it. Yep. I guess the next question is, when they read the beeper, what did the beeper say? Did it say LOL? <laughs> or did it say Blonde? Al- 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 Akbar. Al- Akbar? <laughs> I would it- assume the beepers went off, and then it took those few seconds for the battery inside to heat up hot enough to, bl- to detonate, I would assume. Mm-hmm. How, so how so genius is that, though? How smart is that? I mean... You just, you, they, and there were several, I don't know the number, but there were several several terrorists that were killed. And it's like, hey, you know, uh, God, that guy was jacked up. Yeah. Uh, when you talk about the situation between the terrorists and Gaza and Palestine and all this other stuff, uh, you want precision strikes. Uh, if, that's what if, I was just thinking. If you're legitimately against in, these terrorists and you want us to take them out, that's about as precise as you can get. Yep. Each one of them had their own little bomb strapped to it. <laughs> that's right. And we just pow, pow, pow. Good stuff, man. Yeah, that's genius. I mean, I, I, that's got to be the first time ever somebody's done something like that. Netanyahu had a tweet, and uh, somebody walks up to him uh, in a video, and they said, uh, Prime Minister, people are comparing you to James Bond. And he goes, I'm not James Bond. And he puts his glasses on. He goes, it's Netanyahu. Benjamin Netanyahu. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, dang, bro. That's pretty good. Bring that's it. That's pretty good. That's really that's cool. what those dirty terrorists get, man. Mm. And of course, we feel bad for the people around them that got hurt. Yeah. Some little kids yeah. got hurt from all this. But just don't be hanging around terrorists. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there's a good chance that if they ain't got a beeper bomb, they got a, another bomb on them. Yep. That's what you I get. Just, mm. It's good for them. Uh, Trump shooter. We haven't been in studio since the uh, the latest assassination attempt against Donald Trump. We have learned a lot about this shooter. And how many, as I said, how many coincidences do we have to go through before we say, okay, it's no longer coincidences? Because this shooter is in a BlackRock commercial just like no, the last one was just like what what is the deal i saw this guy and just to give you a little backstory on him 
He used to be, he, he's from Washington. I think he used to be a, a lifelong Democrat voter, very liberal, whatever. But he started to do his own research and start investigating stuff. And he's one of the best on social media for digging into whatever the hot topic of the day is. It could be Diddy. It could be uh, Trump assassination attempts. It could be Joe Biden and the Democrats. It doesn't have to be politics. It can be whatever. And this dude's on top of it. And, I mean, he digs deep. And his breakdown right here of the Trump shooter and what he found out about the guy is absolutely fascinating. Oh, good. So the new Trump assassin just dropped, and there's some spicy details already. Ryan Routh, very strange guy who's lived a very strange life. And this time, the internet was wise and archived all of his socials as much as possible before the FBI took it all down. So here's some basics on what we know about him and one really interesting rabbit hole about who he might be. Right off the bat, though, it's super early. This is all speculative. Take your time. Pump the brakes. We're just digging through dirty laundry. We don't know what sticks yet. But this guy is a private American citizen who traveled to Ukraine on his own dime, question mark, to help recruit civilian soldiers to fight for Ukraine and Afghan special forces he was like recruiting on his Facebook page. Here's an archive of all of his tweets that look pretty damn automated to me. They pretty much all look like this. Mm -hmm. In a past life in Hawaii, he apparently ran this company that made Box. a single tiny home, <laughs> a single Facebook page, and never did anything else with it. Super weird. But I grabbed everyone that he followed on Twitter before they deleted it. He only followed 60. And right down at the bottom of that list, which I think indicates his first follow, is this girl named Sue Kim, who is ex-CIA, along mm -hmm. with some other very interesting oh, oh boy. things. Now again, reminder, this is just speculation, digging through Twitter dirt. Maybe this chick is just a wonderful, patriotic person that's helping America. Who knows? But her account is private, meaning why does he follow her? I've been digging around, and one of my followers said that they found her in the people that follow him back. Um, I have not been able to confirm that for myself because they took the account down. If you've got a video of the 1.2 thousand followers that followed him, that would be great to know. He says that she was at the bottom of his followed list, meaning that she followed him right when he made the account. That would make sense. Weird. Seeing as she's at the bottom of his following list of who he follows, too. I mean, every asset needs a handler. And when you mm -hmm. go through some of these other affiliations here, you get what is essentially the CIA training grounds at John Hopkins University. It explores the relationship between politics and the many kinds of military power, from the use of terror by small non-state groups to the threatened use of nuclear weapons. Its director is John McLaughlin who is literally an ex-acting director of the CIA and ex-deputy director of the CIA, three-decade career at the CIA. David is third on the list of people at the top of this institution at the university. 30-year career in Army Special Forces, various special operations, invading various countries, as well as Operation Enduring Freedom. You get the idea. Anyways, Rand Corporation. That's a military-industrial complex think tank, kind of like the Atlantic Council. And LMI org. Yeah, that's like a military industrial complex education and training program mm. as well. Preliminary findings on the internet when you search our homeboy, the shooter, <laughs> um, show his arrest record, including in 2002, possession of weapons of mass destruction. Jesus. Class right after 9 11. Along with three other yeah, that's interesting. Of things just like one year after 9 11 guns or concealed weapons and driver's license stuff. And yeah, that sounds like some operative shit to me. But again, we don't know any of this yet. We're just digging through dirty laundry on the internet. It's hard to tell what's real. But this is a photo of the weapon he used and the setup he had. People are speculating it looks an awful lot like, you know. Russian Ukrainian SKS. class of rifle. Mm -hmm. He's doing these weird recruitment ops in Ukraine for Looks civilians. Looks like a bad picture of Gary Busey. Well, he's like posting <laughs> yeah. on his Facebook all the time to like no Scary followers. Gary Busey's alcoholic about brother. How he's recruiting yeah. hundreds of civilians to fight for Ukraine. Like posting Gary for Busey like had Afghan sex with special Ian, forces to contact Carroll or whatever. Him. Name. Yeah. In Ukraine. <laughs> but he's like just a random citizen from Hawaii. And one of the 60 people he follows is this. CIA gal that allegedly follows him back that looks an awful lot 
like a handler or a contact. His account looks an awful lot like a bot or an MK Ultra or a Pat. So who knows what the hell this is? His criminal record looks an awful lot like what you might expect a kind of guy in this kind of line of work to leave behind. And then there's the weird video evidence getting turned up. Well, officials in Kyiv simply aren't interested in recruiting them. Ukraine is reluctant to be cooperative. That's Ryan Ruth, a U.S. citizen who set up the International Volunteer Center in Ukraine to help connect foreigners to Ukrainian military units. Now I'm talking to over 100 soldiers every day, and pretty much everybody, every, all of my contacts in Ukraine, oh, they were adamant, pretty much yelled at me every time that I suggested that we bring in Afghans. The Ukrainian government didn't respond to our request for comment. But a source close to the officials in Kiev told Semaphore that their top concern is the question of loyalty in the thick fog of war. The biggest thing is spies. They're afraid that anybody and everybody is a Russian spy. Shout out to some bitch I know on X, um, <laughs> who currently has one of the best archives of all of his socials and accounts. There's a lot of other people doing good work right now. And again, I just want to clarify, I'm not trying to pretend like I've solved the case or like we know what's going on. We just have learned by now that the FBI is going to just cover everything up. And so it's up to us to try to dig everything out before they do. So that's what we're doing. And yes, it's ridiculous that that is even a set of sentences we have to say in America in 2024 when someone tries to kill the former and future president of the United States of America. And I mean, I can only imagine who might be backing up these operations to try to shoot him and who might be providing the intel and the access and the cover-ups, et cetera. So last thing I'll say, Ryan Routh, he's currently in custody. He was driving away in an SUV. They caught him. He's, he's alive for now. And I just want to remind us all, Ryan Routh did not kill himself. Yeah. If cameras malfunction outside of his cell, if he has a weird slipping accident, whatever happens, yeah, you know the story. 50 more days, my money's on at least one more attempt before we get there. So Yeah, he's, prob he's uh, probably right um, wow. as, as much as I, I hate to even think about that. You know, October surprise coming up next month. How long? But the, the, the thing that got me on that one was the CIA lady, which was the first person he followed when he mm -hmm. created the account. Sue Kim, who's ex-CIA, and all the other organizations she's associated with are CIA-ish or military industrial complex or whatever. It's like MK Ultra. we know is real. Uh, the government says they, they don't use that anymore. We got rid of that program. Yeah. But if it gives you power over people, you know the government did not scrap that plan, did not scrap that you know program and it's just i mean everything <sighs> feds man i, I gotta just... tell you to me follow the money how did this guy get all this money to go over to ukraine and come uh, yes. back and everything like that and he was broke he was given dollar donations to the democrat party forever yeah uh, i think totally like a hundred and something bucks but they're all dollar five dollar and he just looked very poor, but all of a sudden he's in a suit and he's able to travel and he's able to do all this stuff. It just seems kind of fishy to yeah, me. Somebody hired him. I mean, I mean, there, you know, I mean, uh, yeah, it just doesn't happen like he that. He makes three thousand a month. He had three hundred dollars in his checking account when he pulled this stunt off. And like, how? Yeah, what's what's going on here? Because you can't trust. It's just like what we played with the. Uh, with the feds showing up at that guy's house. Where was that? I think that was may have been in Washington as well. Uh, it's was, uh, New Hampshire. New Hampshire, that's what it was. Yeah. So in New Hampshire, there's a guy who's like a libertarian activist, and he posted something on social media, on mm -hmm. X or whatever. And I, I don't even know what the post was, um, but it was something that was out of line according to the standards of the federal government. So they sent two FBI agents to this guy's house to question him over something he posted on social media, which wouldn't have been like a death threat or anything like that because social media would have pulled it down. Right. But the feds show up, and he has the most perfect response for these guys. It's so amazing. I want to watch this. This is so good. Hey, how can I help you? Look at these two dweebs. <laughs> 
Yeah. How are you? Here we are. They're with the CIA. Let me do it. FBI. Or FBI. Can you give your full name, please? Supposedly. Is that sufficient to identify as the only Sorry, one at Donald affiliated black. with the FBI? In New Hampshire, yes. Could you please state your full name, sir? Could you please stop recording? No. It's First Amendment right. <laughs> What's your name, sir? Could you stop recording? Please? Absolutely not. You can show me your name and identification or, or I'm going to go back inside my house. Okay. I don't really want to broadcast my... Uh, oh, this is going out right after you guys I walk know, away. So that's why I'm not going to... So you can show me your name or ID. You can walk away. <laughs> we just want to talk to you. <laughs> I'm not going to talk to people who claim to be federal agents unless they can show me identification. Okay, well, you see our badges. I, I need to see... Is your full name on that badge? Look no. at him, finger neck I'd gone. like to see something with your full name or I'm not going to talk to you. I prefer you not to broadcast it. So this will be going online as soon as you walk away. Well, all I want to do is talk to you about a post that was made and if you well, happen to be the one that made the post. I want to talk to you about you guys coming here. Say you make a salary of, I don't know what, low 100K? You guys making six figures? Factor in 50% expenses, overhead, maybe 100% expenses. Talking about burning a couple hundred dollars an hour just here, let alone all the time you guys are spending to investigate something that you know is not against the law, right? Like, so you, you're familiar with... We're, we're so then why would sure. you come? Because we want, wanted to make sure that there weren't any... Other no, threats. you're coming because you're, you're, you're part of a regime that does this kind of thing when you know laws aren't being broken. And that's an embarrassment, man. Didn't you guys read the Constitution? Do you not believe in America? Sir, like, how do you do your jobs you and go time. home? We appreciate it. <laughs> you're walking away. Because nothing we did is against the law. And you guys are fuckheads that try to act like bullies. <laughs> and I hope you go home and are embarrassed. You can't even say your name on camera because you know that what you're doing is embarrassing. You know Americans that believe in the Constitution think you're laughable. And you go home and you think about what you did today. Go home Damn. and think about it, you cowards. Yeah. Drive away. Woo. Yeah. That's Drive impressive. away. Thank you for your time. Sir. You're not welcome. You'd be embarrassed. <laughs> Embarrassing. You guys are embarrassing. Certainly didn't look government issued, the license plate. No, no. it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it zooms in on its finger. Uh, oh, it's good. That's good. And I noticed wow. the the one guy, the guy on the left, did not have a firearm, but the one on the right did. I wonder what that's about. Well, and you notice how he conveniently, yeah, you know, put it, put his hand down. There. Yeah, and, and seriously though, if you have a couple guys show up at your house and they're like, "Hey, we want to talk to you. We're from the FBI, but we're not going to show you our identification." I mean, like, man, get out of here, bro. A lot of people would feel intimidated and let them just run right yes. over. Yes, but that's what the Biden regime is doing. They're sending FBI because saying you're an FBI agent holds even more weight than saying I'm a local police officer. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're doing. They're sending people out and intimidating opponents. The thing that makes me upset is we're paying for this. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. oh. Paid for those guys to go out there and harass somebody over his First Amendment right. I wish you would have called 911 while they were there and asked for police assistance. Yeah. Somebody's trying to rob my house. Yeah. Someone's He's claiming got a gun. to be a... Yeah. <laughs> There's a guy with a gun out in front of my house. Get the cops down here now. You think the FBI maybe would be investigating migrant crime that's happening all over the country or that's happening in, you know, Springfield, Ohio. We could get with as many ch – there there are – Springfield's not a big place, mm -hmm. and they say there's six to seven traffic accidents by Haitians per day. Per day. In Springfield, and people's car insurance are going up, even though they're not the ones in the rack. They're just saying, hey, there's a high likelihood you'll get in a wreck, so we can, you got to pay more to have insurance. Uh, because why, the Haitians don't. Right. That's the only logic. Well, and so why don't we, these FBI agents should just go and do, uh, you know, accident reports. Mm -hmm. Like, if you want to do money well spent, that's the way. Put the FBI on the traffic incidents. I've seen, I've watched a lot of these town halls that they've been doing in Springfield, and they just get better and better. But the media, as everybody knows, is going to say that the idea of the Haitians eating cats, eating dogs, the idea of them going in stores and just 
you know, eating whatever's on the shelf, that all that's fake news. And the fact that Donald Trump is bringing it up is actually racist. And he's just stoking fear over something that doesn't exist. But every time I watch these city council meetings, the people that live there are saying it's happening. Not just saying it's happening. They're saying we're watching it. They're seeing it for themselves. Yep. Here's one. This is one of uh, several several guys that uh, is, was at one of the most recent Springfield City Council meetings. Mr. Heck, I sent you video of the homeless people living in the back of Lincoln School. I have a, the pictures here today. They're living in back of Lincoln School. I t- even showed you video of them. You could see the monkey bars. Nothing has to be done. Code enforcement won't come out. The police won't come out. Come to the real life. Go to Walmart and watch those Haitians open up jars of the tomato paste, pizza sauce, dip their fingers in it and eat it. Go to Kroger's. You know how Kroger's has a little fruit up front for like five bucks? They pick it up and start eating it, then discard the, the thing. I've seen them do it. So I'm not here saying I know they're doing it. I've seen it. The city is going to shit. And you guys Thank thinking you, hey, we're, we're doing good. Yes. But my car insurance goes up. So I called Nationwide, which is my car insurance and my homeowner's insurance. You know what they said? Because the accident rate in Springfield has tripled. I don't see any squatters, tent cities, or anything here, but we got them in our neighborhoods. Shouldn't we share? Are we all not in this together? That's right. Are we all not in this together? Um, I've heard people <laughs> express concerns about personal safety, women who are afraid to walk in stores, women stalked out into parking lots with their children. By, um, but not once have I heard people complain about race. And I wish you guys would stop pushing this through the filter of identity politics because it's allowing you to ignore our real concern. And that's what you've been doing. You've been ignoring us. So why is wow. it these guys are saying that's going on, but the people on the news or Democrat politicians are telling us it's not happening? Uh, I mean, it, it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit their narrative. And to me, it just solidifies what I believe is that they're behind it and they have a purpose. Mm-hmm. There's a reason that the Haitians are being unleashed on these cities. On red cities. Mm, yes. It is very disproportionate how many red towns and red cities are getting these these Haitians or just immigrants in general compared to the blue cities. And they know they're going to wreak havoc on them, you know? They might just start talking about them after the election, maybe. I don't know. That's what they're doing. They're important voters. Yeah. I mean, everybody knows. Now, you'll never point. hear. If they win... If, if the left wins, you'll never hear about the Haitians again. I just, I don't understand, like, if Haitians are eating dogs, what's the big deal? Because Obama ate a dog at one point. He did? He absolutely did. He wrote about it in his book. Ah. You remember. We yes, played I did. Eating a dog meat. <laughs> dog, dog meat. Dog meat. Oh, here it is right here. Here's a clip. This is uh, Obama reading an excerpt from his own book. With Lolo, I had learned how to eat small green chili peppers raw with dinner, plenty of rice. And away from the dinner table, I was introduced to dog meat. Dog meat. Dog meat. Snake meat, tougher. (laughs) And roasted grasshoppers, crunchy. Dog meat, dog meat, dog dog meat, dog meat, dog meat, dog meat. meat. But you know what? Snake is not tough. It all depends on if you know how to cook it. It's tougher than dog meat, according to Obama. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, nor do I want. I mean, I've had snake meat. And um, I think it's I think it's very good. It's a lot like raccoon. You got to be careful when you're around the boys and you start talking about eating snake meat. Yeah, and jokes will start coming. That's true. I'm a snack. Well, you know what? They can bring it because I got it. Can even on my side. <laughs> <laughs> Do y'all want to? We got to get out of here. Do y'all want to hear? Um, there was the guy that was talking about um, the immigration deal going on. He's a de- lifelong Democrat voter, and he had his wife come over from overseas, get her citizenship, spent thousands and thousands of dollars, and now he is pissed because he's watching people pour across the border. Do you? you we played that today. Mm-hmm. Do you want to watch that? Of course. Because actually when you can see, you see his mannerisms too. You can tell how fired up he is. Listen to this. Hello, my name is Eli Bochamp. I'm a registered Democrat, and I have been a registered Democrat all my life. By now, you might have heard that Kamala Harris and Tim Walz are running a joy 
campaign. Now, you know what would bring a lot of joy to my life? Lower prices at the gas pump. Amen. Lower prices at the grocery store. Preach it. Affordable housing Mm -hmm. for my family. Affordable housing for everyday Americans. But what did we get in return? A wide open border at our southern border. Millions of embedded illegal immigrants waltzing right into our country. They get food stamps, they get cash assistance, they get relocation and housing assistance. And what do our everyday Americans get? We get kicked to the curve. Well, guess what? You might even think I'm a racist, but my wife is a legal immigrant. And so far, we have spent over $10,000 for her to be here legally. How dare you go and insult us by just allowing millions to waltz right in while we have done everything the right way? See? On November 5th, I'm going to cast my ballot with a lot of joy for Donald J. Trump. Yeah. And yes, just like me, many other registered Democrats, independents, millions of Americans, we're going to be casting our ballot. But in my case, it's going to be motivated by anger. I'm angry that after my daughter got out of BPK, she only asked for one thing, to go to a water park. But I had to decide whether I would take my five-year-old daughter to a water park or feed my family. I decided to feed my family. We haven't gone on any vacations. We're living paycheck to paycheck. We can barely make ends meet. A lot of people. While you're giving all this money away to foreign wars. You're giving all this money away to illegal immigrants. While us taxpayers are having to flip the bill. And you might think maybe, why am I angry? Because it's sad to say that for many Americans, You have even taken our will to live. You have taken everything from us. But on November 5th, we're coming out in droves. You have no idea how big that silent majority might be. We're coming out. Because if Donald Trump does just one thing, I'll be happy. I just want him to tear the system down. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I'm asking. For him to tear the system down. The system that's tearing my family apart. Damn. The system that's tearing everyday Americans apart. We're tired. And we're not going to take it no more. We're going to come out on November 5th. And we're going to cast our vote for Donald J. Trump. And maybe... That will be your rude awakening. There you go, baby. There you go. Bringing the heat. Wow. That's good stuff, man. I knew I had to bring that one to the table. Yeah. That's good, good, good stuff. Um, Plenty more uh, podcasts coming up. We've got one. I think we're slated for Thursday. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a live Thursday. Yeah. Is everybody good with that? All right. Live Thursday. If you're watching this in real time, you know, just whatever. Uh, and then we've got the man show coming up Friday, and then we're bringing Leland Whaley to the studio on Tuesday, mm-hmm. which is going to be a big deal. So y'all stay locked in for that. Tony Gump, you got some final words, Cole. Uh, sure. Get plenty of water, meat, sunlight, and sleep. Uh, we got an election coming up real soon. Try to get everybody out to vote, even if you're, say, in Alabama or wherever, and you know which way it's going to go. Come out anyway and overwhelm the system. Get every single vote you can possibly get. Do all you can to keep our freedoms. We got to save this stuff. Got to save this country, baby. John Bird. Two words. Evil Knievel. You want to start putting up my videos? I'm going to have flags and stuff. I wish Evil Knievel was still alive. 
We need evil Knievel we today. Would have, we'd have him on the show. If, oh, my uh, gosh. If he was still alive. Yeah. All right. Well, glad everybody's happy. I'm very happy. Yeah. Everybody's happy. Yep. Okay. Woo! All right. Well, we're going to get out of here. Y'all have a uh, fantastic rest of whatever it is whenever you're watching. Till next time, Circus!